Welcome to Celluloid Mirror. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we talk about uh, movies, film definitions, film histories, and then we go straight and talk about film. Today, um, I'm not going to do any film definitions or birthdays. What I am going to do is discuss four trailers that I've seen repeatedly via my YouTube searchings of great movies and my new love of UFC MMA. Okay, so. These movies, they have release dates that are anywhere between tomorrow and the end of the year, and I think that they're scandals, and I don't think that any of us should go see them except for maybe one of them. So I have a beef, and one of uh, uh, my director of me show today, trailers are always, they blow the plot. They always put the beginning and end of the movie why go see the movie? And some trailers are better than other, uh, are better than some of the movies. For instance, the Watchmen trailer, which was w the most excellent trailer I'd probably ever seen in my life. It's also a great uh, comic book, excellent, excellent no novel. The trailer, unfortunately, was better than the movie. So sometimes trailers can be all warning signals too. However, some of these trailers, I'm going to say it right now, any, some of the people who greenlit these movies are going to go to hell and the maggots are going to eat their eyes out because I don't call this entertainment. So let's get started. Number one, uh, welcome to Marwin. I think that's what it's called. Welcome to Marwin. This is supposedly a comedy drama fantasy. It's about a man, he's an artist, who is almost beat to death, and then he becomes the village idiot, and he creates dolls that protect him, okay, from the bad people, all right, who hurt him. Now, number one, this is lifetime for men. Number two, there's nothing funny about getting a beat down, believe me, and my recent foray into combat sports, please, all right, this is not, this isn't even entertainment, but what I do know is, is that I think I do have a sense of cynical marketing men, and they're going to think that Steve Carell's going to get an Oscar for being in this movie that's very serious and all about um, how the underdog, you know, wins out and end. Okay, so excuse me one moment. My new little crush, Chael Sonnen, he told a heckler, Hollywood has taught you to not be proud. Hollywood has taught you to take the beat down. And so sometimes I think this is true with some of these movies that are disguised as entertainment. So Robert Zemeckis, who directed, um, I want to say Forrest Gump, directed this movie. It has Steve Carroll, Leslie Mann, who's Judd Apatow's wife, Diane Kruger, who is literally the best dressed woman in Hollywood. She never makes a mistake. I love her fashion sense. Merritt Weaver, Janelle Monet, uh, Eliza Gonzalez, uh, Gwendoline, uh, she is, uh, I'm sorry I got your last name wrong, Gwendoline, Leslie Zemeckis, the director's wife, and Neil Jordan. So anyway, when I saw, when I saw the trailer, I saw the violence, which I'm a romantic, I didn't like it, but if that's the basis and the premise for the plot, don't rent it tonight. Uh, the release date is the solstice, December 21st. I wouldn't recommend seeing it. And it's also distributed by Universal Pictures, my favorite studio. Okay, so I understand that Mr. Carroll is a comic and a comedian, and he's probably pushing for some Oscar, but this isn't the way to do it. Bless your heart. All right, so my next movie trailer is a movie that I would like to go see very much. It's the only one on the list, and it is um, Mary Queen of Scots, and it's based on John Guy's uh, biography, My Heart is My Own, The Life of Mary Queen of Scots. Uh, it was directed by Josie Rourke, produced by Tim uh, Barron, I think, Eric Fellner, and Deborah Hayward. The screenplays by Bo Williams, and it is also distributed by Focus Features and Universal Pictures. Okay. So this movie stars Cerise Ronan and Margot Robbie. Cerise Ronan plays Mary Queen of Scots. Margot Robbie plays Elizabeth. We've got Jack London as Lord John Darnley, David Tennant as John Knox, Joe Alwyn, Martin Compston as the Earl of Bothwell, Brendan Loyal, and Guy Pearce, who I adore playing William Cecil, um, Queen Elizabeth 
the first right-hand man. Okay, so number one, the moment that I saw Elizabeth and Mary talking in the trailer, you know that you cannot take this movie seriously. They never met in real life, okay, number one. Number two, by the time both of them croaked, they were, um, for that time period, well advanced in years, and they were not beautiful young women, unfortunately, okay? Um, so expect a movie, number three, with a lot of lines to the tune of, why should a woman rule? Or, my lord is arriving tonight with tidings, pretty get me a fan. Okay, you can see a lot of that, all right? But the costumes are gonna be fantastic. I like that Margot Robbie. I've only seen one movie of hers, and that was Suicide Squad. And I did that, I did that movie, we talked about it on, on the show this uh, past few months. And uh, I really like the fact that she's playing a historical heavy. Um, whenever I see an actress, any actress um, play a historical role, I know that they have made it in Hollywood. That's just my opinion, but I think it's true. All right, the downside with a movie like this is that it's been done to death. Three Musketeers, uh, Jane Eyre and A Star is Born, anyone. We've seen this movie done so many times, but now we're gonna see a 21st century uh, rendition done with some style and grace. So I would check that out. I think I'm gonna take a, one of my Christians to go see that. Okay, so that one is definitely a go. My next one I want to discuss is the, um, Unfortunate Peppermint, which uh, stars um, Jennifer Garner. I hope I have the list for that one. Well, basically, it stars Jennifer Garner, and I really like her. She had a TV show for years called Alias. She had that great fight scene with Ben Affleck and Daredevil, which was the best part of a horrible movie. Um, I love her action stick and in Hollywood if you've done it once before they want to see you do it again so she plays a kick-ass person unfortunately uh, the movie is based on the unfortunate premise that because her family croaks in front of her and the guys got off now she's going to kick some ass now that's not entertainment okay I'm sorry you know it's like is this the reason why a mom takes up a gun because her family's already croaked, all right? That's not okay. At least even in the long kiss goodnight, we got to see um, Argal Gina there, um, uh, Argal from Thelma and Louise there. Uh, she was a spy. She'd had amnesia, her family survived, all right? So I really enjoy that premise, but this movie appears to be a mixture of Death Wish, Long Kiss Goodnight, The Punisher, and Double Jeopardy. And the unfortunate thing about the revenge cliche and vigilante uh, cliche in movies is that it's been done literally to death. So I'm so glad to see Jennifer Garner on the big screen again, but I wish it wasn't something horrible and tragic. And sorry, the guys who look like the killer family, they look brown. You know, it's not, it's just not good. I mean, yeah, not like I'm going to go see White Collar Crime movie anyway, but um, it's, it's not all right. So at any rate, this was directed by um, Pierre Morel, I think his first name's Pierre, I was writing so quickly. The screenplay is by Chad St. John, it's produced by Gary Lucia, Tom Rosenberg, Richard S. Wright, and distributed by Lakeshore Entertainment. Ah, here's the cast list. Tyson Ritter, John Gallagher, John Ortiz, Method Man, Richard Crabell, Kyla Drew, Carly Fleming, Chris Johnson, Pell James, Juan Pablo Raba, and Anne Il Ilonze, all right, so um, nice to see you again, Ms. Uh, Garner, I really don't like the plot. All right, so our last movie is going to be one that I briefly hit upon on my list and is the remake of A Star is Born, written, produced, and directed by Bradley Cooper. Written, produced, and directed by Bradley Okay, so I love the fact and I'm jealous of the fact that He's able to be the writer, the producer, and the director after a long list of people who have passed on this 100th remake, and, and it was in uh, development hell for about seven or eight years. So, Clint Eastwood, Beyonce, Leo DiCaprio, Will Smith, Tom Cruise, Ray Liotta, you name it. Everybody was going to be on board for this remake at one point or another in the last 10 years, okay? The current cast is Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga, Andrew Dice Clay, 
playing Lady Gaga's dad, Dave Chappelle, Sam Elliott, Rebecca Field, and Michael Haney. All right, so um, the screen, screenplay was also written by Eric Roth and Will Fettis. Distributed by Warner Brothers and Metro Golden Mayor. The release date is tomorrow. It will be uh, shown, I think, at the Venice Film Festival. I can't remember if it's the Venice Film Festival in California or the Venice Film Festival in Italy, but I'm thinking it's going to be in Italy. So at any rate, um, the original screenplay was written by Robert uh, Carson, Dorothy Parker, and Alan Campbell. And Dorothy Parker was one of the legendary Algonquin Round Table back in the day with a whole bunch of cronies. They'd sit Algonquin Hotel and eat and talk. And uh, I believe William Wellman directed the 1937 version, which is dear, near and dear to my heart with Janet Gaynor and William March. All right, the pleasant plot, I haven't seen the trailer. The pleasant plot consists of this. Uh, Bradley Cooper is a down now country singer. And I'll give kudos to who they gave the country music to, uh, Mr. Lucas Nelson, Willie Nelson's son, they gave the soundtrack to. And Lady Gaga is a rising star on her way up. Now, the original premise of A Star is Born, it's about Hollywood people, it's about movie stars. But the last three remakes, it's always about singers, which most, a lot of singers can't act, okay? And Chris Christopherson, he's all sexy or whatever, but he was in that remake of Stars Born with Barth Seyshen, and people say that he was loaded most of the time. The script was really bad. Matter of fact, John Peters, Barbara Streisand's boyfriend at the time, was producer of the movie. He's also doing producing actor, uh, acting, uh, producing duties on this movie too. Okay, so Chris Christopherson's fine. He can't act with a paper bag, and he did, also did a bad job in Blade. So I'm not always. I'm more into models t testing out the acting waters than I am singers. Okay, so the fact that Lady Gaga's in this, I know she has lots of plans. Bless her heart. It's just not my generation. It's not my shtick. I would rather see movie stars. Singers are good for singers. Actors are good for actors, but the next remake, I would really like to see a broke down actor on his way out, uh, checking out the character actress who's been around for a minute and needs a big break. That would be a great departure from uh, the usual stayed, worn out uh, songbird shtick. Okay, so um, I think that that's it for me today. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Celluloid Mirror. I'd like to thank my crew here at Orca and Gendron Building for its continued support. St. Laveau Consultations and Lemonade Con Company for taking the day off. And all of the YouTube professors I've picked up in the past few months, such as Alpaca Thesaurus, The Weasel, and um, MMA On Point for kind of helping me listen to not saying um all the time, and also Mr. Chael Sonnen. And last but not least, my Mom, my first film professor, Sharon Warfield, Ardella, uh, Paris, Ochison, and Claridge for teaching me how to articulate and appreciate the silver screen. Until next week, children, stay away from those bad movie trailers. Ciao.